is the Mate 50 Pro, Huawei's current top flagship and camera phone, at least amongst those being sold in Western markets. The Huawei flagships are known for their prowess in the camera department, so how good are they this time around? And is the whole package enticing enough for Western users, even without Google services? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our Mate 50 Pro review. This season, there are at least four Mate 50 models coming out, but only this one will be available outside of China, the Mate 50 Pro. We have here the special orange variant with vegan leather. The Mate 50 Pro packs features like a premium durable design, a high-res OLED screen, and a top-tier chipset. But the real stars of the show are the cameras, which include a main cam with the most adjustable variable aperture we've seen on a phone, with 10 steps to choose from. Design-wise, the Mate 50 Pro takes a lot of key elements from the previous Mates, a curved front with a notch, a curved faux leather back, and a circular camera bump. We're happy to see the vegan leather again here. It's soft and incredibly resistant to fingerprints. There is one neat new accent around the camera island, an etched metal ring that surrounds the camera glass. The aluminum frame of the Mate 50 Pro is thin and glossy, which doesn't do a lot to help the grip but the leather sort of balances that out, and the phone feels comfy and reasonably easy to handle. The orange model is special. For some reason, it's more durable than the other color options. For one thing, you get Kunlun glass protecting the display, which Huawei says is 10 times tougher than whatever they use on the others. And while the Mate 50 Pro is IP68 rated against dust and water, no matter the color, only the orange one has improved protection against water up to six meters in depth, like the iPhones. We're not sure what is the reason to separate the features by color. Not everyone might want to buy an orange phone. Let's talk more about the screen. It's a 6.74 inch OLED with curved glass, a fast 120 Hz refresh rate, and a high resolution of 1212 by 2616. This results in a sharper than usual pixel density of 428 PPI. You can also choose a dynamic resolution which can dial down to save energy, or a straight up low res mode if you want to. You also get options for the refresh rate, it can either be locked at 120Hz, or if you go into the dynamic mode which can adjust itself, it can use 90Hz while you're swiping, and 120 only if an app requests it. Unlike LTPO type panels, it can't dial down lower than 60Hz. When it comes to brightness, the Mate 50 Pro can reach about 570 nits maximum with a manual slider. When faced with bright light, it can boost up further to about 950 nits, great for outdoor use in the sun. Content looks good here. Of course, the blacks are super deep because of the OLED tech. The color accuracy can be excellent based on the color settings you dial in, and there's support for 10-bit color here too. There are some issues. Because of software restrictions, HDR isn't available on popular streaming platforms. Also, the YouTube app won't run here. You'd have to use it in the browser and get black bars. At least this way you won't see the notch. The notch is wide and narrow and contains both the selfie cam and a TOF 3D scanner for facial mapping. That means face unlock is properly secure and safe to use, and it's super fast too. But you also have the choice to use a fingerprint scanner for your biometrics. It's located under the display, and it's very responsive and reliable. For audio, the Mate 50 Pro has a pair of stereo speakers, with the earpiece doubling as the second speaker. They scored a very good mark on our loudness test, and the sound quality is good, with nice treble and some bass presence. <laughs> You can get the Mate 50 Pro with 256 or 512 gigs of storage, and that is expandable if you use a Huawei Nano memory card. The interface of the phone is Huawei's latest EMUI 13, which is based on Android 12. It's a heavily customized interface, since Huawei must provide all of the functions you might normally get through Google Apps and services. There are plenty of proprietary apps, and the Petal Browser and Maps service come from Huawei as well. And one feature you don't see so often is that you can use the phone as a remote control for appliances, since it has an IR blaster. EMUI 13 brings some new options for cleaning out your storage. It can stack or even delete duplicate files with the compressible files function. And compressible apps reduces the footprint of those apps you don't use much without uninstalling them. EMUI 13 supports advanced connectivity between Huawei devices, a feature it calls Super Device. It shows nearby devices and allows for easier interaction, all managed through a unified control panel. Of course, the elephant in the room is the lack of Google support and no Play Store. Instead, you would need to use Huawei's App Gallery, which often has pop-up ads. The library has expanded over the years, but you still won't find some popular apps and games here. 
If the app isn't available, Huawei's Pedal search engine can help you try to find places where you can download it from right inside App Gallery. However, even if you sideload the apps you might want, if they require Google services to run, you're still out of luck. Rather than the typical in-house Kirin chipset, this year Huawei has gone with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 for the Mate 50 Pro. It's a special 4G version of the chip because Huawei is restricted from making 5G capable phones. With this chipset, you get the most powerful CPU and GPU available for Android phones right now, and benchmark scores are excellent. As far as these numbers are concerned, the Mate 50 Pro is among the best out there. When it comes to thermal management, the performance is similar to other high-powered flagships, that is, lackluster. The Mate 50 Pro demonstrated heavy thermal throttling in our prolonged stress tests, especially with graphics-heavy loads. Still, real-world tasks aren't as demanding as those tests, and the performance is great, with no hiccups in sight. The Mate 50 Pro has a larger battery than last year, at 4700 mAh, and battery life is great for the class, with an overall score of 104 hours in our proprietary tests. And unlike many other flagships, you get a 66 watt fast charger in the box. With it, we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 79% in 30 minutes. The Mate 50 Pro also supports fast wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. We've saved the best for last, the cameras. The main cam, also known as the Ultra Aperture X-Mage camera, has a 50 megapixel RYYB sensor and a unique stabilized lens with a variable aperture. There are 10 steps available between f1.4 and f4.0, and the camera app chooses which one to use automatically, but in pro mode you can adjust it yourself depending on the effect you want, like on a DSLR lens. It works great. Shooting at f1.4 offers a very shallow depth of field and very pleasant natural bokeh. It's also nice for letting in more light for darker conditions. Meanwhile, narrowing the aperture to f4.0 lets you keep much more of your frame in focus. The rest of the cameras include a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto with 3.5 times optical zoom, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle cam with autofocus for macro shots. There's also a 10 channel multi spectral sensor. The main camera saves 12.5 megapixel images by default, and during a sunny day, it pretty much stuck with an f2.0 aperture. The photos are outstanding. There's plenty of resolved detail, great looking colors, nice contrast, and low noise. The dynamic range is praiseworthy, yet realistic. While we can see some clipped highlights, there is no artificial HDR look. We are also fans of Huawei's mature processing of fine and intricate details like foliage. Overall, it's natural and well balanced. The large 50 megapixel sensor is able to provide a high quality digital zoom as well. At 2 times zoom, the photos are almost as good as the native mode with no major loss of detail. The portrait mode on the Mate 50 Pro offers 1, 2, and 3 times zoom levels, all from the main camera shot at the f1.4 aperture. The default 1 times portraits are awesome, with class leading subject rendition, natural looking detail, lovely colors, and no noise. The edge detection is nearly perfect, since it's created not purely through AI, but from the natural defocusing of the background behind the subject. I mentioned before that the digital zoom does a good job, and it's the same story here in portrait mode. The 2 times and 3 times portraits are a close match to the regular ones. There are a few more errors in the separation though, at least in difficult scenes, which may be a result of the extra processing needed for the digital zoom. Back to auto mode, and the 16 megapixel 35 times zoom shots from the telephoto cam are awesome. They're nicely detailed, with excellent rendition, high contrast, low noise, and praiseworthy dynamic range. The colors are a match to the other two cameras as well. There's a 10 times zoom toggle on the viewfinder, and thanks to the higher res sensor, these actually aren't too bad. There's a drop in sharpness and detail, but these shots are still decent considering how much digital zoom is applied. Moving on to the ultra wide camera, which is a bit of a mixed bag. When everything goes right, the photos are great. There's an extra wide field of view, plenty of detail, even in the corners, low noise, and wide dynamic range. The color rendition matches the main cams too. The problem is with the autofocus. When shooting far away subjects, we sometimes ran into issues with focus hunting, which would result in a blurry photo. The autofocus does put in good work when taking close ups though. You can focus from as close as 3 centimeters, and the results are excellent, with detailed and sharp subjects, high contrast, wide dynamic range, and accurate colors. The noise is well handled too. In low light, the main cam sticks to the brightest f1.4 aperture. These shots are excellent, looking like photos that other phones would need a night mode to achieve. They're well exposed, have a lot of resolved detail and little noise. 
The color rendition is excellent, contrast is good, and the dynamic range is plenty wide. There is a night mode you can enable too, and it adds a couple of seconds to the processing time. It makes the photos much brighter, turning night into day. You will get better developed shadows, but the unrealistic look may not be to everyone's liking. Low light photos from the telephoto cam offer adequate exposure, enough detail, and little noise, while maintaining true to life colors and wide dynamic range. However, if it is really dark, the Mate 50 Pro will switch to a digital zoom from the main camera instead. We do recommend using night mode on the telephoto camera. It benefits a lot from it, with more resolved detail. The low light photos from the ultra wide camera are well exposed. There is a decent amount of detail, and noise is kept under control. The night mode on the ultra wide camera usually takes around 4 seconds, and it will get you a bit more resolved detail and slightly better sharpness. But sometimes it dials up the color saturation to some unrealistic levels, with a noticeable red tinge. The selfie camera is advertised as 13 megapixels, with 3 options for the field of view. But since it appears that the sensor is actually of larger resolution, the crops don't cause a major loss of quality. The selfies come out great, with good exposure, lots of detail with a natural rendition, and well-balanced sharpness. Noise is low and the colors look good, and the dynamic range is wide too. The closest 27mm mode does produce slightly softer photos due to them being more cropped and upscaled, but it's minor. There does seem to be a missed opportunity when it comes to selfies. Although there is a TOF camera on the front, there's actually no portrait mode. The Huawei Mate 50 Pro records video in up to 4K at 60fps with all of its cameras. Footage from the selfie cam is well stabilized. EIS is always on for all of the cameras except the telephoto. The subject here is well exposed and detailed too. The main camera captures very good 4K videos. There's a good level of detail and polished processing. The footage is free of noise, the color presentation is accurate, and contrast is high. The telephoto camera has two zoom levels when capturing videos, 4x and 10x. The ones shot at 4x zoom are pretty impressive. There is no EIS on the zoom camera, it uses OIS instead. The 10x zoomed videos are poor in detail, as you could expect, but not horrible in the grand scheme of things. The ultra wide angle 4K clips are good. They have somewhat muted colors, but otherwise enough detail and excellent rendition. In low light, 4K videos from the main camera are clean of noise, detailed, and have true to life colors. It's among the better performances from a smartphone nowadays. So, that's the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. It's an excellent flagship all around, with its premium and durable design, great OLED display, good battery life and fast charging, and outstanding and versatile cameras. Even the interface works well. You don't have Google, but there are plenty of proprietary features and connectivity options. Still, the lack of Google services is a huge obstacle to overcome, and a lot of people would skip this phone because of it. Also, you don't get 5G connectivity. But if you don't mind that, the Mate 50 Pro is one of the best flagships to come out this year, and it's worth recommending. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you on the next one.